Hey there and welcome to Jeep Sheep TV. This week we're going to take a look at a $98 Amazon exhaust header that I got for my 1994 Jeep Wrangler with the 2.5 liter inline four cylinder engine. All right, first I'm going to review it for you, then we're going to talk about a couple issues I had on my first install, uh, one being an exhaust leak, the other one being some rubbing on a drive shaft. And then lastly, I'm going to wrap the header because it looks cool and it's supposed to help with heat. Let's go. All right. This uh, rubber seal. Don't forget this. You need these. And a star pattern. All right, so this is kind of fun. Now I've done a little bit of work without you here. I've taken out most of the bolts in the header, but I can go through that with you in just a moment. Now let's focus our attention on this right here. This is a stud. This stud comes out of the engine block. If this stud had not been coming out of the engine block, I could have just dropped this header straight down and it'd be out by now, but it's not. So we have to remove said water pump and the bracket for it because the bracket is indeed what's in our way here and the header's hitting it. All right, you should never say anything stupid like, oh, this will be a fast job or I only have to remove one or two things to get this out because then you, you kind of screw yourself. So anyway, you got to take the air box off and you got to take the intake manifold off as well because the header actually comes up and out and not down because there's a brackets and things, engine mounts and whatnot. You run into down there, so all this nonsense has got to come off of there. Yay, I did it. Woo, aren't you proud of me? Oh, I need friends. All right, before we get started with messing stuff up. I'll give you just a really quick review of these headers. These are $100 or 90 something dollar headers that I got off of Amazon and I can post a link below. I'll tell you just a little bit about them. Hi doggy. So first of all, I'm told that you get the long tube headers and that's going to help with low end torque. So that's kind of why we have this set up here. Um, now there's some challenges that come with that and I want to alert you of those. The main one being where this uh, connection point is quite large and it happens really close to your drive shaft causing you to rub and that's no bueno, that's not good. You can see here the drive shaft has been rubbing the exhaust and it has been doing it quite a bit. It happens most often when this side of the car goes up so you're going over a rock or even just around corners it's going to push this up and into that bracket. Uh, there's a lower one, which is the one that's actually hitting. You can see that down here. Now, aside from that, the headers do need to be hit with a hammer in a couple spots. Not too bad, honestly, a very impressive fit. Uh, the first one here, this one, not a big deal. This is actually, and I can probably show you, uh, okay, on your intake manifold there, you got those two bolts, that's where your pump goes in and you have this bracket here. That little indent is from that bracket. So as you tighten the bracket, it makes just a little tiny indent. I might hit that with a hammer just so it's a little bit larger and uh, it's not rubbing as much, but it, that not a big deal, okay? The next one is, oh yeah, it's over here. Right here. I think that this is for your shifter linkage. If you have an automatic transmission, you have some shifter linkage, and I believe that's what's hitting here. And so we had to pound with a hammer. Really not that bad, right? That's not too bad of a divot. Um, and that was it. As far as fitment, that's it. The major concern being the uh, drive shaft, which we're gonna try and fix today. We're gonna try and heat these on this bend here and just tweak it a little bit further. I don't know if it's going to work. Now, the other thing I need to bring to your attention is my engine block head head did not come with a bolt here. Just what lines up there. 
It also doesn't line up super great, but it didn't come with a bolt here. And so being that my new engine block didn't come with that, and the old one also didn't have that, I figured it was not needed. But with this header, it is. Let me show you. I was having myself a bit of an exhaust leak, and let's see if we can find it. Uh, probably not there. Uh, maybe, maybe around there. Oh, no, yep, there it is. Look at that. So we're not sealing on this last cylinder. We need to be sealing on this last cylinder, which means we need a bolt in there. All right, so you can probably see in the picture that I'll throw in the corner uh, in just a second here, but this uh, header it doesn't line up with that last bolt, which is why we couldn't get the bolt in last time. Now I'm gonna to talk to you just a minute about that. So what I did is I came in here, first I enlarged the hole, it wasn't enough. So then I went through and I just notched it out. It's It's gone now. So we're gonna make sure we're going to see at least if that will fix it. I think that it will. Um, but also, something else for you. So this is my old cylinder head, but it should be identical to the other cylinder head. And in here, this last bolt is actually an M12, which is nuts because none of the other bolts are M12. They're all smaller. I don't know what size they are. But on the new cylinder head, it's common to the other bolts. So I don't really know what's going on or why they don't line up, but they don't, so I cut a notch. Um, so be warned of that. All right, this last one is quite a bit of a problem, uh, but nothing that can't be fixed. So this is another intake manifold that I've got laying around. And if you measure this surface here, it's 11.4 millimeters. And if you were to measure this surface here, it's about, 9.6 okay so there is a difference all right it's not bolted down but you get the idea so how this attaches to your cylinder head is your exhaust manifold is here and your intake manifold is here and you have these big fat washers that bridge the gap now you can tighten this down but they're at a slight angle and it's not necessarily ideal so this is the gasket that came with the header and I previously didn't use it because I had a gasket for the whole system here. You can see they all go in one line, so they all need one gasket. And you have this weird header gasket that goes around the intake manifold. And so I thought, well, that's not what I want. I want a gasket that is utilized by both of them. But it just so happens this gasket's two millimeters thick. And the difference between the two is roughly two millimeters. So I'm thinking what I need to do is put the gasket on and then they should line up a lot better. So one problem down. All right, here's the game plan that's probably not gonna work. I'm bolted on to this old head and the head is clamped down to the table. I'm going to heat as thoroughly as I can in these areas here until maybe until they start to glow even. And then I'm going to push down there with like my foot or something. And the goal is to move this towards the table a quarter of an inch, because that's the most we can do. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay, we have a new plan. This is the new plan. All right, so before, the table was moving a lot and that wasn't really working. Now what we're going to do is we've got something substantially heavy on one end of the pallet. I have measured the distance from the pallet that I desire and I've ratchet strapped it in place. So the idea now is we heat it up and it releases the tension is all that's happening. But I don't know if I can get it hot enough uh, consistently. So that's the next challenge. All right, the last one didn't work out super great. So this is the new plan version three, I guess. So now we're going to heat just this tube and we're going to try and get it to bend that way. Just, just a little, little tiny bit. That's all we need. Just a little bit that way. And so I got this big old apparatus on here, lever arm for doing so. All right. I'm thinking this is not going to work. So we're going to just wrap the header and kind of hope for the best. All right, this video is turning into a bit of a disaster, but hey, so I gave up on getting this header to bend. I just not thinking it's going to happen with the tools I have. And since I'm only going a quarter of an inch, 
is probably where it's at for a reason. And so I, I don't really want to run into my transmission lines with the hot exhaust pipe, so I'm just going to stop. But hey, it was worth a shot. Now we're on to part two of three-ish, uh, which is wrapping the header. And look, I've already done some of it. Now I got this header wrap for free. It was given to me and I wasn't really sure what it was made of. And now I know it's fiberglass because I'm really itchy and my throat hurts. So I am going to stop this and put on one of these bad boys so we can not hack and wheeze like crazy and I'll throw some gloves on too. Um, yeah, so my recommendation is wear some protective stuff when using fiberglass, duh. But check that out, it looks super, super good. I'm really excited, I love the rat rod look, um, the hot rod, whatnot. You're not really gonna see it in the engine bay, but I'm gonna know it's there and I'm gonna feel pretty cool about it. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap the rest of this. Um, if you're looking for tips on wrapping your header, this is my first time, so you know, take this with a grain of salt. But down here, I, uh, oh, hold on, there you go. Down here, I folded the wrap in half and then wrapped it around itself so it's a little bit thicker there. And I read that that helps. And then they say like, I don't know, quarter inch overlap, so that's what we're doing. We went all the way up. Uh, I measured it way too long, and so I have a whole bunch of extra that hopefully will fit on one of these shorter pipes. And then this up here, got it from the local auto parts store, but it's basically a zip tie but metal. Um, and those look like like this, stainless steel locking ties. So those are pretty cool. I'm really excited to actually get to use those. Uh, but yeah, so uh, what was the last tip? Last tip was start down here and work your way up. That was the last tip that I read. Now, of course, the one that I show you, I run short on, but whatever. All right, neat. This has turned out pretty cool. I'm really digging it. Now, of course, I broke my last metal tie when doing the uh, collector here, and I'm at a crossroad where I have to decide whether or not I want to buy more metal ties or say that this is good enough. But look at that. That's pretty sweet. Not too bad. Just kidding. Look, I found an obscenely large hose clamp and that will work just fine. Look at that. Yay, a wrapped header. How cool. All right, that's all. Boy, I hope the wrap is supposed to smoke like that. All right, well, that wraps it up. Ha, get the pun, wrap, wrap, wraps it up. Okay, never mind. So that wraps it up. Uh, we tried three things. Ooh, hot. We tried three things today, and two of them were relatively successful. So the first one was bending the pipe so that way we don't hit the drive shaft anymore, and no luck. So I'm gonna just kind of either deal with it or keep grinding a few things until I can mitigate the rubbing as much as possible. The second one was wrapping the exhaust, which we did. Hooray! Uh, and the third one was making the exhaust leak go away. The addition of that new gasket and actually getting the bolt in the back fixed it. So we're good to go. Um, it sounds a lot better from what I can tell and I'm hoping that it runs a little bit better too because that was an exhaust leak before the O2 sensor. And if you know anything about O2 sensors, they their readings kind of dictate how your engine runs. So. Anyway, if you like this video and you want to see more like it, there's a subscribe button down below next to it's a bell if you want to be notified of videos coming out. If you don't, don't hit the bell. Uh, and definitely uh, subscribe. I highly recommend it. We've got a lot coming up. We've got a lot that we're doing, and it's just exciting. So join us, and in the meantime, I'll see you on the trail. 
Coming back, coming back.